Hi everyone, Rick Russell here. Stand by for channel markers. Today we're launching a new series with a short video on how to think about ships. You might have heard us use the term general purpose warship. It's not a new term. It predates World War II. We believe it's an effective way of describing the warships that have formed the core of the U.S. Navy's combat capability since the famous six frigates were built in the 1790s. Mainly, a general purpose warship can perform more than one of the Navy's enduring missions, such as exercise and sea control and power projection, and key point, perform them simultaneously when required. They're usually larger and more complex than other ships, so they take longer to build. They also cost more, nowadays a lot more. Because of their size and complexity, they also need larger crews. Their versatility allows them to adapt to rapidly changing combat situations. The Navy's most famous and decorated warships, from the steam sloop Hartford in the Civil War to the Big E, were general purpose warships. A great example from World War II is the Cleveland class light cruiser Birmingham, CL 62, which in two years escorted convoys, protected minesweepers, engaged German shore batteries and even landed sandwiches for General Patton's troops in Sicily. Then went to the Pacific, where she raided Japanese-held islands, supported underwater demolition teams, escorted amphibs, sank cargo ships, defended carriers from air attack, streamed life rafts for downed air crew, fought a devastating fire on board the carrier Princeton, and joined the surface force assembled to intercept battleship Yamato. In her brief career, she was struck by two bombs, an aerial torpedo, and a kamikaze. When alongside Princeton, she was raked by debris when the carrier's magazine exploded, causing her more than 600 casualties. I think it's safe to say the government got its money's worth. Finally, because general purpose warships are larger, more expensive, and expected to last longer, they're usually built with upgrading and upgunning in mind. From the 44-gun heavy frigate Constitution carrying as many as 60 guns, to Lieutenant Junior Grade John F. Kennedy lashing a 37mm anti-tank gun to the foredeck of PT-109, our ships have been built to accommodate the Navy's ingrained desire to bring as much firepower to the battle as possible. In terms of a general purpose warship staying relevant through upgrading, the best current example is the workhorse of the fleet, the Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer. Designed during the Reagan administration with the lead ship commissioned in 1991, the Arleigh Burks now exist in three flights, with each flight representing a greater level of firepower, improved sensors, and overall lethality than the type before it. The bottom line is general purpose warships form the core of the fighting fleet and go into harm's way. But the U.S. Navy needs a balanced fleet, so next time we'll focus on special purpose warships. That's all for this channel marker. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment or recommend another subject below. As always, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.